yesterday that we were also I talking to myself now. We discussed yesterday that we were also I'm talking to myself again. I don't like talking to myself. Okay, while they finish up whatever it is that's on the table, I'll also get out a piece of graph paper in addition to your yellow handout. If you don't have a piece of graph paper, I have some up here, and you're welcome to borrow it. Okay, we were discussing yesterday how to graph a linear inequality. We talked about it. It really looks a lot like graphing a regular line. We put it in y equals everything else on the other side. We, we normally try to put the x and then the number. We talked about the only thing different is it's a less than, less than, equal to, greater than, greater than, or equal to. I know it's on your handout, but just to go over it in my brain. So we, we graph using our slope and our intercept. So we'll put our point at our intercept. We'll count our slope like usual. We'll have a line. We have to decide next. Are we going to adopt this line or are we going to make it solid? How do we decide that? If it's uh, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, it's solid. It's solid. And then if it's less than or just greater than, we do it dotted. Okay, and then why do I have number four is shade? What shade mean? Okay, and how do you decide if you're shading above or below? If it's uh, greater than or greater than. Okay, so if it's greater than, you shade above your line. And if it's less than, you end up shading below your line. But saying all that, that all depends on you not making one very, very vital mistake that you and I both know we made all the time when we talked about inequalities. Every single person in the room, including Ms. Compton, has made this mistake. And I didn't get to write it yesterday. But I'm going to write it now. What is the one mistake you can make which is going to make everything wrong? Yes, dear? Multiply and negative. Okay, and what do we need to do when we multiply or divide by negative? We have to flip the sign. So, my reminder to you. Oh my goodness, what is this? My reminder to you is to watch out for negatives. That's what I'm going to write in that fourth line, or that extra line, fifth line. Watch out for negatives. Okay, so I have an example, and I have to come back to it now. But if I don't flip the sign, I'm going to end up shading below because it's a less than. And then so everything's going to be wrong. So I've got to flip the sign. So I divided everyone by negative 3, and I should have y is greater than and then I want to break this into two fractions. So I'm going to have negative 2 over negative 3. I'm going to do these two together and have positive 2 thirds x. And I'm also going to put 12 and negative 3 together. 12 divided by negative 3 is what whole number? Positive or negative? Negative 4. Okay, again, what Miss Compton is doing, and there's not a lot of room for me to show it up there, so let me pull out my other paper for today. I had negative 2x plus 12 over negative 3. I'm breaking it into two fractions. I'm breaking it into the negative 2 over negative 3x and the 12 over negative 3. I'm just skipping that step because I already know in my head that means positive 2 thirds x and negative 4. I'm skipping this middle step in my head. If you can't skip that middle step and you need to write it down, that's fine. I honestly just don't have enough room on my handout. Okay, so we're going to graph this just like we normally would in life. We would go down to the intercept at negative 4, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. We put a point. And then our slope is positive 2 thirds, so I need to go up 2 over 3 up to over three up to over three 
down to left three. To left three. Okay. So I've got all these dots. Everyone else have dots on their graph? I'll give you a second. I see people still dotting. Okay, I need to connect the dots. Do I do a solid line or a dashed line? Remind me. It's a dashed one for this problem. Okay, and then is it a greater than or a less than? So we need to shade above or below? Above. It makes sense. Greater than, you shade above. So why shade? I seriously mean just kind of shade in everywhere above that line. Okay, so this just looks kind of goofy. I agree. But mathematically, this means for that equation, the solution set for that inequality is everywhere above this line. So everywhere I've colored pink is the solution set. But the line itself is not part of the solution set. That's why we're dashing it. But everything pink is part of the solution set. So I could, if I was questioning myself, because trust me, sometimes I forget to look the sign. I could plug in a point somewhere in the pink and make sure that equation stays true. For instance, you know my go-to is the origin if it's available. So if I was questioning my own sanity, I could plug in 0, 0. And so it would be 0 is greater than 2 thirds times 0 minus 4. Uh, 0 is greater than negative 4. 0 is greater than negative 4. So I know I'm not crazy. So if you think you've made a mistake and you've shaded the wrong region, pick a point inside where you colored, plug it in. As long as the statement doesn't look dumb at the end, you're good to go. Okay, are there any questions about this? We're going to do two more, which is why you have your own graph paper. We're going to do first, I need to get my own graph paper. First, we're going to graph 4x plus 3y is less than 12. That's our first example, or our first one that's not on the handout. Yes, dear. Do you need graph paper? Okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. I probably should have just a second again. Oh, there it is. Pause it there. I'll just you. No problem. I have a full graph paper. Okay, so you are going to have to graph a few on your own today, but most of your worksheet is deciding like A, B, C, D, who, or who goes with who's matching. So there's not a lot of graphing required. So I know you heard me say, or someone heard me say, there is a worksheet. But I swear the worksheet's mostly like matching and multiple choice, so it's not even you graphing, because that takes a minute. What's the first thing I need to do before I start graphing this bad boy? Okay, so I subtract 4x from both sides. I have 3y is less than negative 4x plus 12. Now what? Okay, if I divide everyone by 3, I end up with y is less than what? And then I ask myself, should I have flipped the sign? No, I don't flip the sign. I divide it by a positive 3. I don't need to flip the sign. Okay, and then go ahead, Kiana, what was it? Uh, Negative what? Okay, negative 4 thirds x plus 4. Perfect. So over here, I'm going to make my graph. I had a teacher, I think I've told you this before, that if you didn't label X and Y, she would not give you your points. I'm not that person, but she was. She was serious. Okay, it's 4 thirds X plus 4. So I've got to go up to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then down 4 over 3. Down 4 over 3. 
down for him. Over here. Okay, so I've got this line. Do I, when I connect the dots, do I do a dotted line or a solid line? Is it dotted or solid this time? Dotted, because it's just less than. So I need to dot my way down. And if you want to get out a ruler for any of the ones you did to be more precise, I totally understand. Okay, and then do I shade above or below that dotted line? Below. Uh, below because it's less than. So my suggestion to those who really don't enjoy coloring because this is something that requires coloring is to ask me or to Bart use your own highlighter or marker because then you can shade super fast. So again, this is saying that our solution set is anything below that dotted line. So if I wanted to plug in, I'm telling you, if the origin's available, I try them. I plug them in and I say a zero less than negative four thirds times zero plus four. Well, zero is less than four, so I'm not crazy. And I know that sounds silly, but I want my A in math class. I should plug in a point and make sure I'm not crazy. And that's what would happen if you plugged in above the line, the wrong region. If you plugged it in, you would end up with a silly statement, like zero is less than negative eight. Well, that's not true. Zero is not less than negative eight. So you'll know when you've done something wrong if you check yourself. Okay, the last one I want to, are there any questions about that? I want to do one more, and you know I'm going to put less than or equal to this time, or is it greater than or equal? I'm going to do greater than or equal to this time just to make sure we get at least one like that. So the problem is y is greater than or equal to 2 fifths x minus 1. Oh, look, it's already set up in the form you want and everything. 2 fifths x minus 1. Okay, so I put my point at negative 1. I count up to over 5. Up to over 5. Down to, down to, down to, down to. I graph it. And then for the first time all day, instead of doing a dotted line, I get to do a solid line because it's greater than or equal to. <coughs> and then it says greater than, so do I shade above the line or below the line? Above. So I shade everywhere up here. And no, you don't have to do a beautiful job with that unless you just enjoy color. Are there any questions about this? Okay, good. Then I will save our orange checkpoint on this for tomorrow. As we've discussed and done before, a checkpoint means it's like a quiz, but I don't let you leave me till it's perfect. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to give you a worksheet you can work on, but it is not your homework tonight because you and I both know you got to finish up the choose your own way tonight because it's due tomorrow and it's going in the 60% category. And if you have a question about it, you want to come see me in zero period tomorrow morning. Make sure everything's perfect.